Hawaiian Fridays. Um, we're going to draw a Hawaiian shirt and the first thing we're going to do is download a drawing reference which is located down here in the assignment. Um, if you're using the browser Chrome it should be a fairly simple affair and just click on that right click and save the image down to your desktop. And just choose desktop, save it there, and now switch over to Illustrator and we're going to create a new file and we'll use a print workflow and we're using tabloid. That's 11 by 17 create a tabloid page for ourselves and now we're going to use file place to bring in the drawing reference from the desktop and there it is I'll click place and now I'm just going to drag out the image position it on the page and you'll notice the X through it is indicating that the files not embedded I'm now going to go to window workspace and I'm going to Go to Essentials Classic. I'm going to use the embed function right here. And that way the image will be saved along with the file. So I'll just save it now. And I'll save that on the desktop as well. Now I'm going to use this as a template, so I need to go to Layers and double-click the layer icon there, uh, the layer, and I will convert that to a template. Now this is going to lock it down, as you can see, and now I've got to create a new drawing layer, and this is the layer that I'll do my artwork on. Now I'm just going to use these flamingos as my um, inspiration. And I'm going to use a tool that's fairly simple to use. It's this one just below the brush tool. It's the blob brush tool. And it uses a stroke color. So I want a nice pink flamingo. I'm going to draw it. Um, I'm going to just use this as a kind of reference. And I'll just start drawing that flamingo's neck. And I could change that color at any point in time. I'll continue with that blob brush and just fill that in. And that's the nice thing about the blob brush is it's very simple and easy to use. It's kind of like finger painting in a way. And it creates a solid outline. And of course, if you need to make adjustments, you can do so um, using the eraser tool. You can remove things that you don't need. Now, you can make the brush sizes larger or smaller by depressing the left and right brackets. That's very handy. So there we have it. I'll change the color now. We'll put a beak on. I'll make the size of that a little smaller using the left bracket. Oops, I'm still on the eraser tool. Got to go back to the blob brush tool. And I'll just set that in there. Change that to black. Make the brush smaller with the left hand bracket. Make it much smaller again. Create an eye. Right bracket just to make it a little bit larger. And 
then I'm just going to select that, give it a stroke, it's a little bit darker. Just gives it a little more definition. And then, again, with the blob brush, I'm just going to make the legs. can add more details in here. And now I want to take this artwork, I'm going to scale it down so that it's actually usable as a pattern. But one of the things that you should do is double click the scale tool right here. And make sure you've got scale strokes and effects, even put scale corners on. And what that does is it'll scale down any strokes in proportion to the size of the object. And now I'll go to the selection tool. I will scale that down. I'm holding the shift key down. And that's more or less the right size. And now I want to make a pattern out of that. I do that by going to the object menu, pattern, make. Now immediately it makes the shirt disappear. It just does that so you can focus on making the pattern. You can tell that you're in the pattern maker from this gray bar that's highlighted here near the top. You'll also notice that it's added the pattern in up here. Let me just make that a little bit larger so we can see it. And you can see right there that our flamingo has been added in. Now, the pattern options menu allows you to change the distribution of that pattern. You can choose the type of grid, stagger it like bricks. You can use a hex pattern for it. And you'll notice that there's these two functions here, size tile to art and move tile with art. If they're selected and I move my artwork, the tile moves with it. If I make my artwork larger, the tile also increases in size. And if I have these things switched off and I make the artwork smaller, the tile remains in position and it retains its size. So by making these sorts of adjustments, we can customize our pattern. You can look at it in a 5x5 five five arrangement, a 9x9 nine nine arrangement. You can dim the copies as much as you want so you can focus on the artwork. And the final thing is right up here, the pattern tile tool allows you to actually change the location and sizing of the tile itself. Now, if that tile is very, very small, the elements start to overlap one another. And these things here control the sequencing of the overlap. Left to right, with the rightmost object occupying the highest position. Clicking it this way, the leftmost object occupies the highest position. Right now, the topmost object is in front. Or we can switch it so the bottommost object is in front. So this controls stacking order of the pattern elements. It's really only important when the pattern elements overlap. I'm just going to open that up a little bit. And now, when you're satisfied with your pattern, you click Done. You no longer need that artwork because it's now inside here. It's been accounted for. So I've just deleted the artwork, and now I can begin to trace the shirt and apply that. Now, once the shirt's been traced, you would be applying the pattern. So let's just say um, this is the left 
or sorry, the right panel of the shirt. And we want to fill that with the pattern. Again, we want to make sure it's the fill and not the stroke. You'll notice that the pattern is see-through. Now, if we use the appearance panel, we can give this multiple fills. So I'm going to drag the fill down. I'm going to duplicate it. And this fill on the bottom, I'm going to give a different color. So I open up my color panel, choose a color, and there's my background color. I can also give this a stroke. Just give it a half point and make that stroke black. So you can see there's one panel that has two fills. The top fill is a pattern. The bottom fill is a solid color. You could also make that a gradient fill. You could experiment with that as well. You can also use the width tool to imply a degree of thickness below an element to make it look as if light was operating on it. Now, I'm just going to copy that. So there's the left panel of the shirt. I'll just option drag that. And this is sort of as, as if there are two panels of the shirt. Now imagine that this shirt was floating above this panel. we would expect that there would be a shadow cast on it. So we're going to have to create shadow details. But more importantly, look, as even I, I move each panel, the pattern remains fixed. So here's a great little shortcut using the tilde key. That's the little squiggle right below the escape key. When you have a panel selected and you hold the tilde key, you can use the arrows. I'm just going to get rid of the solid fill for now. Um, I'll select that and get rid of that solid fill. I've got this selected. Holding down the tilde key, you'll notice that I can move the pattern. So I want those patterns to be offset. Let me just hide the template for now so we can see what's going on. So the two patterns are now offset just using the tilde key. That's more like real life, where patterns do not line up perfectly. Let's take a look at creating the sleeve. Let's just say this was the sleeve, for instance. And I'm just going to rotate that. And you'll notice that the pattern does not rotate alongside it. And so, if I were to make an adjustment on that, again, I could use that tilde key, select this, use the rotate tool. And with the rotate tool, the first thing I do is click down to establish a point of rotation. Then I move away from that point, move a good distance. That'll give you more control over the rotation. Hold down the tilde key, and you can rotate the pattern. This makes it look more realistic. And so if we look at that, we'll just select all of those elements, duplicate their fills, and give them a colored background. Oops. I've got to make sure that the duplicate fill is solid in the back, patterns in the front. I'll select this, duplicate it, choose the background, fill it with color, select this one, duplicate the fill, select the background fill, apply the color. And so there you can see how you could construct the elements of the shirt and offset the patterns in a way that make it look more realistic. 
The other thing to include is a shadow, and you can just use your pen tool for that. So if there's an element that requires a shadow, I'm just going to lock these things down. Command 2 to lock. I can use the pen tool and I can create shadow. And I'm just going to fill that in black with no stroke. And I'm going to set that in the opacity menu. I'm going to set it to multiply at 30%. And you can see that it creates a lovely kind of shadow detail. Now I'm going to move this behind by using a command shortcut. Command left bracket will move that object down the layer cycle. So you can see it looks like this material is slightly lifting towards the bottom here. Now you may also want to include a very slight blur. If we go to blur and choose Gaussian blur, we can preview that. A lot of blur implies that the object casting the shadow is very far away from the background object. So we don't want a lot of blur, just a tiny little bit. Click OK. And now the shadow has a slight blur to it. So the tilde key, the appearance panel, making multiple fills on our objects. Multiple fills like this. Um, and using the tilde key to offset them allows us to create panels of that shirt pattern which more mimic the real world in that they don't line up. So we use the tilde key and keyboards to create a vertical offset in the left and right panels. And I used the rotation tool in conjunction with the tilde key to rotate the pattern. This means you only have to create one pattern. You don't have to create duplicate objects. You're using single objects. And again, you can use the width tool to bring in a little bit of extra thickness to imply um, lighting. Don't go too crazy with this because you can overdo it. Just be very subtle. Make it thinner where light is actually hitting the object a little bit thicker in the shadow areas. And again, Create drop shadows. This will come in handy when you're creating the collar elements. It'll give the collar elements more definition. So when those are being drawn, if you were to imagine this being a collar element, okay, I'm just going to simply use this eyedropper tool. And if I double click it, I can say, pick up all of the appearance and apply all of the appearance. So that when I use that, it's actually applying everything on this to this selected object. Now, again, I just make a slight copy of that maybe, offset it a little bit, and select this copy and just fill it in black with no stroke. And remember, under opacity, we set it to multiply at about 30%. And you can see that my collar is now casting a shadow. And remember, make it consistent with reality. So I'm tapering that shadow down towards the end as the collar meets up with the fabric. 